Welcome back to the shop. Thank you for coming by. In our last video, we started tearing into our quarantine project, which is moving the axle back on our little utility trailer here um, to try to take care of the negative tongue weight that it always, always is going to have with this terrible balance point that we've been given from the manufacturer. Now, in the last video, you watched us take the deck apart. You watched us take the axle and springs off the thing. You watched us take some measurements and stuff like that. And now it is time to keep cutting this thing up so that we can measure and weld it back together. Let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so we have a clean slate to work with now. The brackets have been cut off, the fenders have been cut off. We are ready to start planning where we're gonna put our axle back on this trailer. I took a little bit of time and cleaned up our spring back brackets as best that I could so they are ready to weld back in place here. Now, you can see that this is where the spring brackets for this side used to be, and I've moved them back very nearly 12 inches. Now, uh, and they're mocked up into place here. Now, 12 inches sounds like a lot, but what you gotta think about is our center line of our axle was two inches in the front half. It was two inches ahead of the halfway point of the trailer, and even the halfway point of a trailer is a terrible place to put an axle. So this is a drastic uh, bump, but I think it's gonna give us just what we need. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm not using a lot of math and science for this. Um, I'm not using any, in fact. Uh, but it's a small trailer, it's not gonna carry a whole lot of weight. I, I think it'll be just fine. I'm just using a little, I'm gonna use uh, I'm going to eyeball it, I'm going to use a little bit of experience, and I think it'll be just fine. Um, so in any case, I've got these mocked up about, right about where I think they want to be. I kind of held the spring up just to kind of see, you know, how it would fall. And it puts our axle right about here, which is in the rear third, which if you remember in the last video, we looked at our car hauling trailer. The rear third is a pretty good place to start uh, to, to put your axle. So what we got to do now is clean up the trailer in a couple of spots. I need a ground and I need a clean place to weld. So let's get to that. This is my favorite part. I love welding. It's so much fun. Let's get to it. Let's fully weld it.
right? Let's do the rest. All right. Well, those are the welds. I think that focus, uh, it's not gonna focus. Either way, I think that that's not too bad for the world's cheapest Harbor Freight welder. It looks awesome. Everything is welded into place. Now, oh, so everything is welded into place. We got our brackets down. Um, I actually saw that I put the springs in place just to kind of make sure that they were gonna, I don't know, work and go in. <laughs> Um, the brackets are centered on the frame rails. I measured everything up and the axle is going to be pointed the right direction now. Um, I think all that is pretty much ready to go. Now it's time to figure out where we're going to mount our fenders and how we're going to mount our fenders. Um, like we talked about, I'm going to try to drop the fenders down a little bit. Uh, maybe it'll make the trailer look a little better. I feel like a total nerd trying to make a trailer look cool, but it's what I want to do and I think it's going to be fun. Um, so that means that we got to flip this thing back on its uh, back right side up and start mocking this thing up, put the springs back on it, put the axle back on it, and for that we need wheels. Now, with all this work we can't use those same old cruddy old, old S10 wheels, so I found something different. I got these Gen 3 Camaro wheels. <laughs> They're bitching, right? I got these Gen 3 Camaro wheels. Um, they look, they're gonna look awesome, I can't wait. They're a little worse for wear, so we're going to sand these up and paint these probably off camera because you guys don't need to know what painting a wheel looks like. Um, but in any case, let's get this thing flipped back right side up, put it back together, and we'll start mocking up where our fenders need to go.
a lot of fiddling like you saw. The fenders are mocked up in place. They're just tacked. They're not final welded or anything like that. This whole thing is just kind of mocked together. Uh, but this thing looks awesome. I'm so pumped. It's so dumb, but I love it. Check it out. Oh, look at that fender gap. Isn't that awesome? Look at this thing. This thing looks mint. Oh man, that looks so good. I'm so pumped. This is awesome. It took a whole bunch of measuring and uh, kind of a lot of a, a lot of figuring out for uh, how this thing should look, at least how the process should go. But that is it. So from here, um, like I said, they are just tacked in place. I've marked them so I can put them back in the right place um, when it's time for final welding. But what we need to do now is start really looking ahead into the future. And the next thing that we need to do is really kind of start final assembly on this thing. Uh, but before we do that, I bought some paint. I've got rusty metal primer so that I don't have to completely spotless this thing. And I got some farm equipment heavy paint. Now this is spray on, so it's not gonna be super durable, but I think this is gonna be more durable than not. Um, the spray paint goes on way thinner than automotive paint uh, does. So it won't be the best, but it'll work fine for a little trailer like this. So what we need to do now is rip these fenders back off again. And what I want to do is prep the prep and primer and paint the back side of the fender as well as the frame um, where the fender actually attaches. Um, obviously, we can't do the whole thing because we're going to have to weld these. Oops, uh, we're going to have to weld these back on, but we want to prep behind there because I don't want, obviously you don't want metal to metal together for one is going to rust. Raw metal to metal is going to be a terrible disaster. So I'm going to pull these back off. I'm going to sand or not sand, but just kind of wire wheel everything off and start painting. And um, I will bring you guys back in the loop when I am final welding these things together. Let's get to it. Okay. So Using the tacks I had before and a couple of jack stands here, I have the fender mock up into place. I prepped and primered and painted the back side of the fender and the frame rail here just so that there's some kind of rust protection there uh, when these two pieces of metal are sandwiched together permanently. Uh, all we got to do now is I'm going to tack the fender back in place again, make sure everything is set. Um, I went ahead and disassembled the rest of the suspension, the axle and springs are all gone, so we can't really reference that, but. I feel comfortable with where we are, and uh, it's time to weld this thing into place. Let's do it. like that, we got ourselves a mounted fender. Now, of course, this makes me nervous not having the wheel and axle and everything to um, reference by, but um, I, uh, it's kind of tough to do it with everything assembled, so I'm going to do a little bit more welding and make sure the thing's not going to go anywhere, and then we will move to the other side.
To the next side. All right, so our fenders are put back in place. That was a really quick process. And guys, the hard part is done. All of our measurements, everything, all the hard stuff, the cutting, the welding is done. And I, I'm super pumped by that. Um, my plan was to go ahead and final weld the fenders on and then begin uh, prepping and painting the rest of the trailer but if I'm being honest with you it's kind of making me nervous not being able to check all my measurements and stuff with the wheels actually on so I'm going to change my plan a little bit what we're going to do instead is start from the bottom and build upwards I'm going to go ahead and prep and paint the springs and the axle and as well as the spring brackets so I can bolt the suspension back together for the last time put the wheels on and then we'll be able to double check make sure the fenders are placed where we really want them to be and then, then I will final weld the fenders into place and uh, begin prepping and painting the whole rest of the trailer. That includes taking the tongue apart. I have decided I'm going to go ahead and buy a new wiring kit. This stuff has been, these wires have been tied into knots and it, it, it just looks really terrible. So I'm going to buy some new lights and a wiring kit so we can put all new stuff on our basically all new trailer. Um, I don't think you guys are super interested in watching me wire wheel and paint a whole trailer. So I'm going to use a little bit of YouTube magic and just get this done really quickly. I will see you guys in a second. Okay, so that was a bit of a slog. Uh, a day or two and a wardrobe change later, I have the suspension and the axle painted and put back on the trailer. Now comes the big part, the big moment in, in every sort of build like this where the thing sits on the ground for the first time under its own weight with its own wheels and everything. Um, I also cleaned up our third gen Camaro wheels like I showed you earlier. So those are looking awesome. Um, I thought you guys might want to actually see this part. I did all the painting and all that stuff off camera, but I thought you wanted, would want to see this part with me. I'm going to take it off the jack stands and let it sit on its own wheels for the first time. Let's do that. So that's it. She sits on her own weight once more. Now again, I am not uh, delusional from no social contact. I understand this is just a trailer, but I think this is pretty cool. It definitely has better tongue weight balance now. Um, if I'm honest, it's still a little nose light, a lot lighter in the nose than I thought it was going to be, but I actually have to work a little bit to lift up the front. So that's way better than what it was before where you could just use one finger and flip it over basically. Whew. So that's the good news. Here. Check out that vendor gap, huh? <laughs> look at that. That's awesome. Um, let's look at some things that I've done. So I really dislike it when uh, when uh, some of these things are not, you know, I like 
tongue jacks, but I like them to be welded on. So, oh, it's not going to focus, is it? Come on now. There we go. So I went ahead and welded this in place while I had the welder out and working and doing its job. So that's welded in place, nice and solid like. The bolts always come loose and they jig they allow the stuff to jiggle around and all that kind of stuff and I can't stand it. So <clears throat> that's permanently welded in place and looks good. The fender, the Harbor Freight welder is doing good work, but the fender is actually super solidly mounted. It actually when you when you lean on the fender it bends this rail. So I might not affix the top at all, but we got our wheels cleaned up and they look awesome. This it, it just it just looks so good. This I lowered the fenders, they were attached up into here. I have lowered these fenders by a solid three and a half inches to be nice and tight to get the tire. I think it looks a whole lot better. And the trailer as a whole is just gonna work much better now. Um so, all of that is the good news. Look at that. Oh, it looks so good. I also, I goofed a little bit. Well, how about this? I'm going to turn you back around and we'll have a conversation. Probably going to have to cut all this out. But, here we go. So, I goofed a little bit. Um, I was talking about being afraid of, uh, you know, the fenders not being placed right. I want to get the axle on there. And while well, that works just fine, what does not work just fine is where I put the spring brackets. They were a little bit off. They were uh, too far away from one another. So the axle wouldn't sit in place without pulling the springs in. And I didn't want to do that because if you, you can imagine, if you pull the springs in, they're going to bind when they try to move up and down. So. I ended up cutting the mounts off the axle and kind of moving things around a little bit. Um, I figured that would be a whole lot easier because I could actually have the axle out and I can move it around like I wanted to and stuff. So I moved the mounts uh, on the axle and got everything placed and everything looks like it's, it's working just fine. Um, now for the bad news. Uh, my plan was to finish this project in this video. I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, I have not been able to find a good source for a deck for this thing yet. I want to put an expanded steel deck on it, and I've not been able to find anything yet. Um, that is going to dictate what, what material I use for decking is going to dictate a few more fabrication pieces that I need to do to really make this uh, work a motor fit a motorcycle easier uh, as the best way possible. I need to weld tie downs onto this thing. I need to figure out how to mount the wheel chalk up on the on the front like I want to. There's a lot to be done still that I, I just don't have solutions for yet and I am out of time. I need to get this video edited up tonight actually and put up um, so that I can move on to the next project. It looks as though there is a little bit of racing to be done and I've got some, well, I'm not going to show you, but the workbench is full of parts for this race car right here that I need to get done uh, and, and put that on there. And I've been busting butt on this thing all day every day for the last couple of days so I need to move on for now you will see this thing finished I can promise you that this thing will get done it's not useful to me right now so I have to do something with it and uh, so you will see this thing get done just not right now I know that some of you are really hoping to see a finished product product but what I'm gonna do is roll this thing out in the sun and we can do a little walk around and just kind of show you what it looks like. Um, but unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to totally, totally link this project in this, uh, in this particular video. Maybe the next one, I'm not sure when I'll jump back to it, but either way, I will finish it, I promise you that. Um, so, for now, I'm going to clean up the shop, clear some stuff out of the way and get this thing outside where you can look at the the whole picture is one big piece, and I'm super pumped for that because I think it's going to look super cool. But let me get the shop cleaned up, and I will revisit with you when we are outside, and we can take a look at this thing. So there she is. That is it. Man, this thing looks awesome. So if you remember the profile from the first video, the wheels lined up a bit more like right here. So we moved them about 12 inches backwards, which is outstanding. And I think this is gonna work beautifully. And these wheels, I just love these wheels in general. I think they look awesome. So I'm hyped for that. But this is it. This is what she looks like now. It'll look a lot better when there is a deck on it and uh, probably a load as well.
in any case, like I said, that's pretty much where I have to stop this video. Um, we got a whole lot of work done. It was, well, it was about the same amount of work that I thought it was going to be. Um, a lot, in other words. In any case, like I said, I have to jump to the race car uh, next weekend. There may or may not be an event. I haven't decided if I'm going to go yet or not, but I have to jump to the race car. Uh, you'll have to ignore my neighbor is mowing. I can't really do anything about that. But um, in any case, we will have to see this project through in another video. Um, it's all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put this out back, and I'm going to drag the race car out of the corner and start working on that probably right now. Uh, before I go inside and edit this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more race car stuff or if you want to see this thing. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know uh, what you've been working on during quarantine here. Um, catch me in between videos on Instagram at d.daily.racer. I'm always posting there. There's all sorts of stuff going on, including some of my eye racing over there. Uh, lots of stuff like that. Again, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to see some more. I will see you guys in the next video.